What's up folks, it's James from LPJ Models. In this video, I'm going to be building a Dar Armor base for my Minerva build. If you haven't seen the Minerva build, you can find the link in the description or in the card in the corner. So that was a brief introduction. Let's get on with the build. I cut out the shape I wanted for the diorama out of one centimeter styrofoam board. This was built up with PVA glue so as not to melt the foam and then stacked up in three layers. I have got some thicker foam, but I don't have a foam cutter and when I cut the original base out, it just looked manky, so I decided to carefully cut these out and stack them. I also cut out a smaller piece of foam for elevation, and this was glued on top of the styrofoam block. I must stress, it's important to use a water-based glue when working with this stuff, otherwise it will melt, and nobody wants that. I used some styrofoam offcuts to build up a blank for a wall. I then glued in some cocktail sticks, so I can remove it and add it to the base when I need it. Now this small diorama base is based off a postcard I found of Verdun. In the postcard, the walls were damaged, but it looked like the rubble had been mostly cleared away, so I'm going to try and reflect that in this build. Pre-built brick walls always look a bit uncanny, so I decided to make my own. First up, I mixed up some stone cast powder with water. This is a bit stronger than plaster, but it does bubble a bit more, so you need to be careful when casting. I'm going to be moulding the bricks from a silicon mould by a company called Diorama Debris. They do a small selection of construction moulds which work really well for our dioramas. Check out a link in the description. To colour the stone cast powder to get a proper brick colour, I used various pigments and paints over 9 or 10 batches to get variation. This is just one of them, but it will give you an idea of how I got there. First up, I mixed in some VMS fresh rust pigment. Bricks are usually coloured from the amount of iron oxide that's in the clay that they're made from, so they can come in a wide selection of colours, from a pale tan to yellow ochre, to a deep orange rust. Back to the mix, I added some Vallejo Carmine and mixed this in. It's always important to mix it thoroughly, and tint the plaster more than you'd expect, because it always dries a bit lighter. I then added a more orangey pigment, standard rust, and again mixed it in really thoroughly. When I'd finished mixing, it was time to pour the mixture into my silicon mould. It's really important to work the plaster mix into the mould so you don't get any bubbles. So I stippled it into the brick shapes with an old tatty brush. Once I'd filled all the brick apertures, I scraped off the excess with a steel ruler. This was then set aside to dry for about an hour. When it had dried, it was time to press out all my lovely little brickies. And although I tried really hard not to get them, there are still bubbles on some pieces. But that's not too big of a deal, I can just face the bricks the other way. So although the bricks are looking good as they are, I wanted to add a bit more variation to them. I put all of the bricks in a plastic container along with some pigments. You can clearly see here all of the different colours I used when casting the bricks. Hopefully the wall will look realistic. When all of the pigments have been added, I put the lid on and gave it a vigorous shake. Not only will this add some variation to the bricks, it will also round off some of the corners, making the bricks look more aged. And there we go, that's the bricks done. I think they look great, so hopefully the wall will come out well. So, let's get brick laying. Starting with the corner for alignment, the bricks were glued onto my pre-made wall section with PVA glue. And I know, it's a tedious way of making a wall, but the end results are worth it. So I continued building up the rest of the wall, brick by brick by brick. But in reality, this only took about 45 minutes, which isn't too bad but I dread to think of building a full-size 1 35th scale building.
When I'd got to the end of the wall, I started breaking off some of the bricks to show damage. These were then glued in place with PVA glue. I didn't attempt to add any mortar to the wall because I wasn't sure how best to do it, so I just left the bricks as they were glued on. For the main groundwork of the base, I decided to use Daz clay. I got the idea from a night shift video and I hadn't used it, so I thought it would be worth trying. I pre-treated the base with some PVA glue so the clay had something to stick to. The wall had been previously glued in place with PVA glue. The clay was torn off its block in chunks and then pressed into place on the diorama base. I started off with just putting the clay around the wall, I'd do the road later. I smoothed the clay with the back of an old pair of tweezers wet with water. I mean a knife would have done the job, but these were to hand. This was then spread carefully up against the brick wall. I was careful not to get any on the wall proper, because it would ruin the brickwork effect. To tidy it up even further, I used a brush dampened with water to wipe the excess away from the wall. This is one of the things I liked about when working with the Daz clay. Cleanup was easy with water and you could smooth it out nicely. To make the earth area look more natural, I stippled and blended the clay with a medium brush. And what ruin would look like a ruin without some debris around? I crushed up some of the cast bricks and pressed these into the wet clay surface. I didn't go too crazy, as in my reference picture, most of the debris had been cleared. I know it's hard to see, but underneath my hand, I'm sprinkling sand onto the base for some more texture. I then used VMS sand and ballast freeze to fix the sand onto the base permanently. So, with most of the texturising done on the top part of the diorama, it was time to move on to the roadway. Once again it was pre-coated in PVA glue. Daz clay was then spread over the entire surface. I made sure to blend this into the previous work so the join line wouldn't be obvious. Once I'd coated the whole area with clay, I stippled in some texture with an old stiff brush. The texture was then followed by applying some more crushed bricks into the roadbed and pressing them down. These would have been pressed into the road by foot traffic and road traffic over time, so I made sure they didn't protrude too much. I used the end of a brush to sketch in some wheel marks. I then rolled a wheel over them to give the impression of tread marks. With the roadway done, that leads us onto the painting. I sprayed a mix of AK Real Colour, Dunkel Brown and Dunkel Gelb straight onto the terracotta coloured clay. The base colour doesn't matter too much as long as it's an earthy type of brown. Once the base colour had been applied, I added some dry areas or highlights with pure AK Real Colour Dunkel Gel, heavily thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinners. It's during this step that the extra tonal variation from the lighter colour starts to make the base look more realistic. And you're probably thinking, oh but James, you've painted over those bricks. Well, I've got a bit of a hack solution for that. I carefully applied some lacquer thinner onto the bricks to remove the previous layers of paint. This also left some of the earth colours on the bricks, blending them in nicely to the base. Next up, everybody's favourite bit, 
let's paint all the tiny little stones. I used a wide selection of Vallejo colours and my artist Opus 2.0 Kalinsky Sable to paint the stones in. I ended up using about 8 or 9 various Vallejo colours, mostly a selection of tans, browns, greys and a white. This is another one of those steps that whilst time consuming can really add life and realism to your diorama base. So now it's time to add some grass. I used three different types of AK grass tufts. 6mm autumn and 6mm step tufts for the main grass and 3mm summer tufts for small new growths. Although they're advertised as self-adhesive, I don't really trust it, so these were dipped in PVA glue and then pressed onto the base. These were applied randomly to make sure the grass growths looked natural. I think these are a really handy product, although the colours are always slightly off, but not to worry, I can paint it later. As well as on the verge, I added some grass in between the ruts on the road and on the front of the base. To unify the grass a bit, I used some MRP Olive Green. This is already highly thinned, so I didn't need to thin it. This was sprayed at low pressure on the grass tufts to blend them in a bit more and to make them look a bit more green. As I didn't want to hide all of the yellow on the tufts, I sprayed it very lightly and in select areas. I'm now going to add a few more earth tones to the base. Firstly, I use some AK Splashes Effect Dry Step mixed with VMS Universal Weathering Carrier and painted this on the base in a random manner. I then used some engine grease oil paint thinned with Universal Weathering Carrier to add some moisture and depth to the tread marks. These extra tones add a bit more realism to the base. In my box of diorama goodies I found some leaf scatter and I thought this would make my base have a nice autumny feel to it. This was sprinkled on and then swept into the areas where I wanted them. Once I was happy with the placement, I used some VMS sand and ballast freeze to keep it in place. Some really tiny twigs were then glued in place with VMS Flexi 5K CA for dioramas. These are another thing I found in my diorama box. I can't remember where they came from, but they look good. Next up I added this little tree looking thing. I'm not sure what it is or where it came from, but it was in the diorama box. This was glued into a pre-drilled hole with VMS Flexi for dioramas. The whole scene was sealed in with a layer of acrylic matte varnish. This was airbrushed on making sure to get everything. And guess who forgot to press the focus lock button? I used Gelux Materials Aqua Magic mixed with Vallejo Russian Uniform and German Sea Black Brown to make a muddy puddle colour. This was brushed into the ruts in the lower areas of the diorama. I didn't want the base to look soaking wet, I just wanted the recessed areas to look damp. And of course, I had to put in a small puddle.
That's the top of the base done. Now let's move on to the sides. I used the air dry clay again and smoothed this over the diorama sides. I made sure to blend it carefully into the top. Now this wasn't my first attempt at edging this base. I'd previously tried to edge the base unsuccessfully with coffee stirrers stuck with PVA glue. Even though I was going to paint it, it didn't look quite right. It looked a bit children's lollipop stick fort diorama. So these were taken off and I went with the clay approach. When the clay had nearly dried, hey, I'm impatient, sorry. I sprayed it with AK Real Color Black, thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinners. I really should have planned the edging of the base a bit better. Although it looks okay, I still think the clay looks a bit messy. And with that final coat of paint, the base was complete. All that was left was to put the Minerva in place. And, in an upcoming video, I'm going to be painting these figures to put on the base as well. So stay tuned for that. Hi guys! Before we get on to the final reveal pictures, I just want to say a big thanks to my patrons, these guys, for supporting my work. If you're interested in becoming a patron, just click the link. If you're interested in becoming a patron, just click, clink, 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 click the card in the corner or the link in the description. Also, if you're enjoying that video, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment and tell me how I did. I'm pretty sure the next video is going to be the figures for this diorama. So that's fairly settled but after that i'm not too sure so if you head over to my community tab right now there'll be a poll with four different kits of which i'll show you in a second and you can vote and choose which one i'm going to build next so the first option in the poll will be the ibg hms harvester 1943 and 1700 scale i haven't built many ships so i'm quite excited to do this whether it turns out any good i don't know if you want that go and vote for it Next up would be the new tool 135th Tamiya KV1 1941 early. I quite like KVs, I wouldn't mind doing it. Again, let me know. Third up is the quirky but pretty cool ICM FCM 36 World War II French light tank. Um, there's a fairly nice two tone green and sand camo option, or there's a really crazy hard looking one which I really don't want to do. Um, if you want that one, go vote for it. And last but not least is the Border Models T3476 in a wooden box. Um, just looks pretty cool. I've built a border one. It's been good. So if you want to see that one, go and vote for it. Just to wrap it up, thank you for watching. And here are the final images of the diorama. <laughs>